Welcome to Special Education with Hamid Nakvi. Today we are going to start a series of videos on the topic Introduction to Linguistics. Basically, it is a code relating to BS English of Alama Iqbal Open University and the code numbers 9051. But uh, the topic is such that it is very important for special education as well because we uh, talk about uh, the importance of uh, language development and language acquisition of specially uh, uh, special children as well. So let's start with this from the point, basically from the point of view of Alamai Paul Open University BS English Code 9051. We start with what is linguistics because the code is introduction to linguistics. What is ling linguistics? In very simple terms, in a phrase or a simple sentence, you can say linguistics is the scientific study of language. We study how the language developed what are its sounds, what are its words and their formation and the structures of words, then how the sentences are made, that is a uh, uh, grammar part uh, also, and then the semantics parts, that is meanings, we deal all about it in uh, linguistics. Linguistics studies human language and uh, its nature, how it works and how it's put together. In other words, human language is made up of various building blocks of different types and sizes. We'll uh, discuss all this in detail in the uh, coming videos. And uh, here one thing is to be made clear right at the very outset. Linguistics is not about a particular language, that is English, Urdu, French, German, or whatever. It is not about one language only, but it is about languages in general. And uh, mind you, uh, there are about 5,000 languages in the world now. There are many languages which uh, uh, were weeded out, they uh, became dormant, or they are no more in use, and there are several languages which are coming up. But as I said, we, when we talk about linguistics, we do not talk about any particular language. We may give instances from uh, some languages, but we talk in uh, linguistics about languages in general. One question which come into the mind of anyone and that is the absence of evidence about the origin of language certainly hasn't discouraged speculation about it. That means that we do not uh, over periods of uh, hundreds and thousands of years we do not know how the language is actually started developing. Despite the fact that there is no evidence available that how the languages started developing, still we have uh, speculations, still we have uh, theories, still we uh, try to figure out how the languages started developing. So over, say, uh, say over the centuries, many theories have been uh, put forward. Everybody giving uh, his own logic and his own reasons how uh, the languages develop. And uh, uh, the question is, over the centuries, many theories have been put forward. And just about all of them challenged, discounted, and often ridiculed, explained. So here we are, standing, standing at the threshold 
looking back uh, in the history, trying to find out uh, how the languages uh, originated. And in this regard, we are going to talk about uh, many theories. And mind you, theories explain a phenomenon. And that uh, from uh, usually from a, uh, a scholar, we uh, uh, get that. The most common theories on the origin of languages, which we find in the history of, uh, and literature, they are the bow wow theory, the ding dong theory, the la la theory, the poo poo theory, and the yo he ho theory. We uh, uh, talk about each one of them uh, in the uh, coming uh, moments. And remember, we have the question in mind that the, uh, theories uh, explain a phenomena. Each theories uh, give its own reasons, and each theories have been questioned or criticized. So we'll uh, discuss this. The first theory about uh, uh, origin of uh, English language was the Bowall theory. And according to this theory, language began when our ancestors started imitating the natural sounds around them. What does it say? That long, long time ago, our ancestors heard natural sounds around them and the, the first speech was onomatopoeic. That means it was borrowed from the surroundings around them, the natural sound. And it, uh, um, it was marked by echoic words such as moo, mew, splash, cuckoo, and bang. So uh, when these theories were presented, Obviously, it was criticized on the ground that uh, relatively few words are uh, onomatopoeic and these words vary from one language to another. Now, natural sounds are natural and they are uh, same all around, they are universal. Uh, the, then the, langu uh, 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 the languages uh, should have the, uh, been the same, but uh, the uh, sounds which was, uh, say, according to this theory, was uh, copied, imitated from the nature. They should have been the same. But the criticism is that for in different languages, uh, you know, for instance, uh, a dog's bark is heard as, uh, uh, in Brazil, hum hum in uh, Albania, wang wang in China. So uh, this theory uh, doesn't appeal much Another theory is the Ding Dong theory. And this theory was favored by uh, Plato and Pythagoras. Maintain, they maintain that speech arose in response to the essential qualities of objects in the environment. Now that was regarding the natural sounds, the first one. This one was, uh, says that uh, there are objects in the environment and uh, from the qualities of uh, these objects, the speech uh, started uh, developing. The original sounds people made was supposedly in harmony with the word around them. Almost similar to the first one, it has also been criticized. And it has been criticized on the ground that apart from some rare instances of sound symbolism, there is no persuasive evidence in any language of an innate connection between sound and meaning. So this theory, again, criticized and criticized on very sound grounds. Then there is the theory, is the La La theory. And the Danish linguist Otto Jefferson suggested that language may have developed from sounds associated with love, play, and especially song. Now, this is what he says, that languages develop from the sounds associated with love, play, and song. Now, uh, this has been criticized by several, 
and one of them is uh, David Crystal. He says, and in, in, the, in the, the book uh, named How Languages Works, that this theory fails to account for the gap between the emotional and the rational aspect of expression. So, uh, again, uh, not very uh, impressive uh, from uh, his point of view. Now, another theory is the poo poo theory. This theory holds that speech began with interjections, that is, uh, spontaneous cries of pain. Ouch! Oh! And uh, sounds like that, explanatory, uh, exclamatory sounds. The criticism is many languages does not contain many interjections. And Crystal points out the clicks, intakes of breath and other noises which are used in this way bear little relationship to the vowels and consonants found in phonology. So this too has been uh, uh, not uh, accepted by many. Then the last one which we are going to discuss here is yo he ho theory. And according to this theory, language is evolved from grunts, groans, snorts, evoked by heavy physical labor. When we do something uh, difficult or uh, strenuous, uh, then uh, certain sounds are uh, produced, grunts, groans and snorts. And uh, the, uh, this theory says that the language developed from that. And obviously, though this notion may account for some of the rhythmic features of the language, it does not go very far, very far in explaining where words come from. So far, we have talked about uh, how uh, the language originated and different theories on it and how uh, much uh, these theories have been accepted. Uh, by the later uh, scholars, uh, later literary critics. Now we uh, uh, move on to another part of uh, this introductory lecture on uh, linguistics and we talk about the characteristics of language. Here are most important characteristics. Some of the characteristics are mentioned here. Language is arbitrary productive, creative, systematic, vocalic, social, non-instinctive, and conventional. Some of the characteristics are mentioned here. And uh, for each characteristic, we have a slide to explain. Here it is. Language is arbitrary. What does that mean? It means that there is no inherent relationship between the words of a language and their meanings or the ideas conveyed by them. First one, there is no inherent relationship between words of a language and the meanings. So it is, in this sense, it is arbitrary, right? The uh, explanation is, for instance, there is no reason why a female adult human being be called woman, woman in English, aurat in Urdu, zan in Persian, and feminine in uh, feminine in uh, French. Second characteristics: language is social. What does that mean? Language is a set of conventional communicative signals used by humans for communication in community. So, in that part of view, language is a, a social uh, tool. It permits its members to relate to each other. When they want to communicate, they want to express themselves, uh, express any need or uh, explain something, they use language. So, from that part of view, it is social. It permits its members to relate to each other to interact with each other and to cooperate with each other. Then language is symbolic. Language consists of various sound symbols 
that are employed to den- denote, uh, sorry, uh, denote some objects, occurrences, or meanings. Language is symbolic in this sense that various sound symbols that are implied denote some objects, occurrences, or meanings. These symbols are arbitrarily chosen and conventionally accepted and employed. Another characteristics of languages, language is systematic. Every language is a system of systems. Now it is not haphazard. Languages works on systems. We are, uh, as we proceed, as we uh, uh, give details, everything uh, uh, thing is going to be clear. At, uh, at this point of time, it's sufficient to say that every language is a system of systems which had phonological and grammatical system and within a system there are several subsystems. For example, example, within grammatical system we have got morphological and syntactic systems. Then the next characteristics of languages, languages is vocal. Language is primarily made of vocal sounds only produced by physiological articulatory mechanism in the human body. In the writing came much later as an intelligent attempt to represent vocal sound. Here there's a little uh, 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 mistyping in the slide. These uh, two words may be excluded in the uh, writing came much later. No, what what is trying to say is basically the language developed uh, as a, a vocal uh, means of expression. Initially, there was no writing of languages, but as the uh, time passed, uh, the languages were converted into uh, writing symbols as well. Language is a non-instinctive conventional. Now, language is non-instinctive and conventional. What does that mean? No language was created in a day out of mutually agreed upon formula by a group of humans. It is not a constitution that the parliamentarian sat down or the legal experts sat down and they formulated it. No. Language is developed with the passage of time. It is non-instinctive. It was not by instinct. It, it is conventional. Conventional in the sense that as uh, the uh, time passed, uh, the words were introduced and they were accepted and uh, they were used and then uh, they were uh, properly inducted and formalized. Language is productive and creative. Language is not st- uh, something static. Languages have creativity and productivity. The structural elements of human language can be combined to produce new utterances. Languages develop. They are creative. Languages change according to the needs of the society. Now, uh, that segment, uh, we come to the next segment of uh, this uh, uh, topic. That is components of uh, language and uh, the every language for that matter has basically this sort of structure languages have uh, mainly uh, can be uh, languages have sounds languages have structures languages have meaning and under sounds languages have phonetics phonology languages have morphology languages have syntax and under meaning languages have semantics language of pragmatics. So in the coming lectures, we are going to uh, discuss each of uh, one of them thoroughly. Till then, see you in the uh, uh, part two. Stay blessed. Those who have uh, seen uh, uh, this channel for the first time, you are requested to uh, subscribe so that whenever we uh, upload the next video, Uh, you get the notification immediately.